Before I begin, I wanted to make sure that everyone was aware that my company, Titan Lab Incorporated, has a ongoing contract with Body Rocket. The difference though is I actually suggested to Body Rocket that I make this video. It's been something I've wanted to do for quite a while. I've just never had the time. But I think it's really important that when we're talking about aerodynamics and wind tunnels and sensing, that people understand that there are two categories of technologies out there and this is the one that I think is going to be successful personally. So you might look at one of these photos of a wind tunnel and you go, wow, except the most important thing is not really visible in those photos. I mean, you first need to understand what is a wind tunnel? Well, a wind tunnel is nothing more than a fan at one end, maybe some air straighteners at another, maybe a way of uh, accelerating that air and then diffusing it at the fan. And you plunk whatever you want to test right there in that kind of that, that accelerating point. So you have good consistent velocity. And that's it, right? Well, no, because what data do you want? You want the aerodynamic drag force. So there's a load cell, that bike or that car or that airplane is mounted to a load cell underneath that measures the horizontal force. Everything in that chamber is, is nothing more than to simulate a consistent environment. You, you might have pitot tubes and stuff to sense and control the fans for, for adjusting the wind speed, but all of that is to simulate a consistent environment. What you are measuring is nothing more than force data from a load cell. How is a wind tunnel, an actual wind tunnel, different than any of these sensing things that are on the market or projecting to come to market? Well, all of them are basically based on Newton's second law. Force equals mass times acceleration, except it's actually the sum of the forces. And we try and work out what those forces are through a power meter and then through its losses and then through any other things that could impact those losses because we want to call them constants like your drivetrain efficiency but that's actually going to change the mass is going to change like if you empty a water bottle you sweat you take on um, new equipment like you have a wheel swap or you just take on gel packs or something like that all those things affect the force and the acceleration but power is the big thing and and i've done a lot of work my my whole career has been in force and torque sensing generally for power meters and there's a limit to them and we have left only we have asymmetric problems we have coupling problems and they still exist the current generation of crank based power meters have not solved that pedal ones are generally better but you know, there is, there is compromises in them too. So that, I mean, that's, that's not even all of it. Like things such as if the sun comes out and heats up your tires, it's going to change your rolling resistance. And you, you don't have a way of sensing that unless you have tire um, temperature sensors. And I mean, in order to get some of this stuff working, companies have had to use tire pressure sensors because as they heat up or cool down, the tire pressure is changing enough to do things to that equation. And they're, you basically end up chasing all of these little bits to try and make that power better. But the power data, you may be starting with basically something that's insufficient to ever making that equation work well enough for you. So these things solve all of this stuff to basically estimate force. I mean, it's directly solving it, but you, there's so many things along the way that you just don't know and can't predict that basically force is an estimation that aerodynamic drag force is an estimation. Now, over the years, companies have gotten better at running this and figuring out these, these things, but I kind of look at it like with power meters, many companies tried non-direct sensing methods. In fact, there, there used to be a, a term direct force power meter versus non-direct force power meter. And none of those non-direct force power meters exist, exist today. I mean, that's kind of the amazing thing that we've seen is that 
no matter through all the sophistication and stuff, basically putting something in that load path, a, a load cell with a strain gauge on it, killed every non-direct force sensing power meter out there. It just, they couldn't come close. And that's, that's the difference here. A wind tunnel senses force directly. All of these systems estimate. So if they're chasing that, can you imagine if we just skipped all the middlemen and just sensed force directly? Well, I don't actually have to imagine because that's what I've been working with Body Rocket on. Let's just sense the aerodynamic drag force directly. Why bother with all of this intermediary stuff? There's some limitations here. I mean, it's not like we can put some load cells down at where the wheels are contacting the world, kind of like would happen in a wind tunnel. The bike moves, in a wind tunnel it's stationary. So we have to get clever. And once you're on a bike, once you're in a race, once you're riding, like there's only a few things that you can do once you're on a bike. And all of those things are related to your body position. And that's the thing that is most of your aerodynamic drag. You've got this tiny, skinny little bike, and there are going to be some interaction effects. But for the most part, the thing that you want to adjust, the thing that you want to see on screen to tell you, oh, you're out of position, is the aerodynamic drag on you as a rider. So how do you do that? Well. Just take the horizontal load cell out of that wind tunnel and let's start putting it on a bike. Now, if a person was only sitting on a bike, not their hands and feet aren't touching, we just have one at a saddle and just measure the horizontal force. But if they use their hands, well, we'll need another one where their hands are. But the pedals, and, and that's the tricky part because, all right, we sense at the pedals. But we need the horizontal force. And you can see that what's horizontal at one instance is not the same thing as another. Whereas at the handlebar and saddle, they're measurably, they're about the same. What's horizontal is horizontal. Now, once you go up on an incline and stuff, you, you need to start correcting. So you also need to sense the vertical forces. But like this starts opening up things that you'd, you'd never know in those other systems. You know your way to a, a level of precision that you've just never been able to know. You have to estimate it for, for those other systems and changes to your weight can affect the calculation. But here we just, you know, a byproduct of what we're doing, you just know. So the pedals have been one of the the really big challenges you have to know all the the angle of the pedal relative to the crank how it was installed and then you have to know where the crank is precisely and then you have to resolve those horizontal forces and then you have to correct for what your incline is and, and all of that sounds pretty tough but you can directly sense those things you you don't have to ha have sensors that are you know What's my rolling resistance? Well, it's a, a function of, of, of temperature. It's a function of road surface. It's a function of vibration. It's a function. No, we're just, all right, here's your angle. You know, it's not. So now you can see how we've just taken all the tech out of a wind tunnel. We've put it on a bike and we've just subjected to a much more difficult real world environment. So why am I making this video and why am I working with Body Rocket? Well. I think it's important to understand that Body Rocket never found me. I was uh, a few years ago doing normal human things, you know, uh, searching for strain gauge plus other thing on uh, Google's patent website. You know, just normal things that humans would do. And not much would come up, except Eric's patent did when I did that search. And I reached out to Eric, the founder of Body Rocket, um, on LinkedIn. And I said, you know, uh, I've worked with power meters and strain gauges and stuff. Uh, looks like you're doing something with that. Um, looks interesting to me. Do you want to chat? So we started having uh, e e email threads and calls and video calls. 
and it all kind of culminated to a point where I was planning a, a vacation to the UK, uh, and I figured I could easily dedicate it. I got a, a whole day to meeting up with with Eric and uh, the other person who was involved with Body Rocket at the time. And so I, I, I did that. I got to see their early prototypes and they got to explain the problems and I got to explain potential solutions and tech that I'd worked with. And it was really, really interesting, but it was, Body Rocket was, was very small. Um, it was just the two guys at the time. So I came home and I stayed in touch over, over uh, the next many, many months. Um, to, when it came to a, an actual point where uh, I said, well, I mean, I know some industry folk. Maybe I can start trying to set up some introductions. And it was very fortunate that one of the people I introduced them to became Body Rocket's first major investor. Fast forward uh, maybe a year, um, I'm an independent. Uh, I haven't even technically started Titan Labs at this point. And uh, Eric wanted me to look into, well, you know, we've been trying with with this pedal system. It's just not working for us. Um, you know, you're the crank guy. You've worked with, with crank power meters. Can you make us something that does horizontal force with a crank? And I always thought, maybe, but no guarantee. So small contract later, uh, I design and I build uh, cranks, different various different instrumentations I tried. And I built calibration rigs. Uh, simple ones here and uh, basically i ended up saying here's your cranks but they can't do it like depending on your orientation they, they can meet spec but in other orientations they won't meet spec um and they went okay here's your money and whatever i was so bothered by what felt like failure that i i knew that i i could solve this like the resolution is there. The, the tech is there. I just need a better element to put strain gauges on to sense. So I started by, I went and I used my own money. Um, I bought a set of pedals. I instrumented them and I built another calibration rig for pedals and I tested, I got to testing. And what I started seeing was it was better. It was, it wasn't exactly what they wanted, but I finally, after a few different gauge arrangements, I got to something that was close. So I think, uh, two or maybe three years ago around Christmas, um, I think, I think between uh, Christmas and new year's, I emailed Eric and was like, Hey, I think we've got some pedals that could work. They'll beat out your current stuff. They'll beat out the crank. And I think they might just meet spec. Do you want to talk about it? And so we did. And a few months after that is, is when we got involved with longer term contracts where I'm providing uh, design and expertise to Body Rocket. I mean, I guess that leads me to why I'm making this video. Um, Body Rocket never requested for me to do this. I, in fact, I suggested doing this sometime last year is that I don't think that people really understand that there is another way to sense aerodynamics on a bike. I don't think people truly understand the difference between the body rocket system and everything else that has kind of come before it. It's a different challenge, but it, it mimics a real wind tunnel. If you took that load cell out and you plop a bike on it and you put it on top of a van and you drive it around, that, that's going to be just as accurate as if you had this nice controlled environment. The difference is you don't have that controlled environment. You need to now sense your, your wind speed as well and know that accurately. But you're still just measuring force. And that's what Body Rocket is doing. We're not estimating force. We're not running it through, through an equation and filters and, and, and models for weird things. We're just measuring force. And I've gotten to see them move from those lab environments out into real worlds and, and wind tunnels and tests with professional athletes under them. You know, I lived through this in, in the past and it's, it's always exciting, 
But there I was just making another power meter. Here, no one's doing this. Sure, people are trying to sense aerodynamics, but no one is like miniaturizing a, a wind tunnel, putting it on a bike, like when I like miniaturizing those load cells and putting them in harsher, uncontrolled environments and then making them work. No one's close to doing that. And as we've seen with power meters, there used to be the term direct force power meter and non-direct force power meter. And we don't see it anymore because the non-direct force power meters, they all died. They don't exist anymore. None of them exist in, anymore in this world. Because when someone decided to, let's just sense it directly. And it works. You have less noise and less problems and less mathematical models to try and solve. You're just sensing what you want. And that's what Body Rocket is doing. We're at the point now where I'm primarily working on version 10 of the Body Rocket system. Uh, and uh, that primarily focuses on the pedals, but I am advising and helping refine the handlebar and saddle load cells as well. But version 10 is not a prototype. Version 10 is the commercialization of this as a product. And that's a tough road. Hopefully you learned a little bit about how wind tunnels actually work and realize that that most important thing in that picture, you can barely see, you see a mounting plate. With that, thanks for watching.